Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Now once upon a time here on the channel I did a catalog and catalogs video flipping through a counter book of patterns from 1945. And two of the designs in that book have really stuck in my mind as styles that I wanted to go ahead and combine into one. First we have this lovely color block suit which of course feels very Blade Runner to me although this of course predates Blade Runner but Blade Runner was looking back to the 40s and you can see how the two connect. And the second design is this dagged front pointed front closure jacket here. I thought I could go ahead and combine these two ideas together, do a color blocked jacket in stripes like this but with the dagged front closure as well. But like all of my color blocked projects. This does take a little bit of extra time with all of this piecing, both in the patterning and the cutting and the sewing of it all, but it is very satisfying when the pieces do slot together. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. And we begin with my basic block pattern as per usual. I do like to start at the beginning so you can see the full process going from this basic block pattern to this little summer jacket. I decided to go collarless for this. I'm sorry. I know many of you prefer a collar. One day we'll do all kinds of collars, but it sadly is not today. And this will have a princess seam as well, but I'm just deciding if I want to swing my dart over a little bit towards the center front. So that's what I'm doing here, trying to move that over, deciding if I want the princess line or where I want it to go up into the shoulder, basically. That's what I'm trying to decide here. And I decided, no, instead of moving the dart a half inch closer to the center front, I wanted to move it a half inch closer to the side seam. That way I could have this line go all the way up the start leg into the shoulder in one very straight line, which is nice. And this dart will eventually be eliminated anyhow. So whether I'm, no matter where I'm swinging it, it is going to be eliminated. And because this is an outer layer, I usually like to add in some sort of shoulder padding. To this, I didn't actually add in the pad itself, but I gave room for it. So eventually I'll need to make some shoulder pads for this. But I went ahead and tipped up my shoulder seam the quarter inch up along the shoulder and then a quarter inch out along the arm side like I normally do for jacket stuff. You've seen me do that before. And I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want these little points, these little dagged areas to come along the front. I call this a dagged edge. Um, it's not scallops because it's pointed and in the like medi medieval and like renaissance-ish times this was called a dagged edge to have these sort of shaped edges. So I'm, I'm going with it. Uh, I don't have a better term. So if you have another term for this sort of zigzag edge, let me know. But I was thinking, you know, the buttons need to be centered on the points of this and it would be best to have a button right here at the bust and one right at the waist. So basically what I ended up doing uh, in the end, ignore my blue lines here. I have my green marker now. I'll have one of these points aligned right along the apex, one right along the bust, and then I've just found the middle point between those two to make my third. And I have already drawn a line a half inch out from my center front as an indication to start with here. I was thinking about using these larger buttons to begin with, but I ended up using something else in the end, which you will see when we get to that much later. But I was just finding the midpoint between my apex and my waist, and then finding the midpoint between those three points to be able to create this zigzag edge here. Um, you can make these things as pointy or as shallow as you like, honestly. Um, but this is all overlapped already. So there's a half inch already, and then I'm extending these peaks out from there. So that I can be sure the right and left overlap well in the end. And I just drew from the apex triangle all the way up into the neckline. Hopefully that makes sense. And I, of course, I will need to add seam allowance to this if this is what I want my finished edge to look like. I will need additional seam allowance. Then up here on the neckline, I extend the seam allowance down along the edge of where I've shaped everything down here along the center, but I've uh, narrowed that into nothing up at the shoulder just because I didn't want any additional seam allowance added onto my shoulder seam because my shoulder and my neckline of my bodice block already have seam allowance built in. Dagged, jacket, front, grain line, center front, side front, all that stuff. And then I'm going to remember to put notches into this princess seam before I cut it apart. What a wild idea. I never do that. So about two uh, inches above and below the apex, I will put notches along these style lines so that I can line those up later. Putting in notches in this early? I don't know. Who am I? And at this point, I'm going to start drawing in where I want my color blocking to end up, where I want the front stripes of this to be, where I want them to end up. I want to make sure that none of the stripes, none of the seams align with where I'm going to have buttonholes in the end because that would just be annoying. Unless you're planning on using the seams themselves as like leaving slits in those seams and using them as buttonholes, which might work, but I wasn't willing to try it today. I just wanted to make sure my seams didn't line up with my buttonholes so I could use my regular buttonhole technique using my machine, making sure that these color blocked lines are out of the way of any seam lines. Um, of course, I'm designing the seam lines, the style lines, the fit of this garment. Same time, I'm deciding the patchwork of it, the color blocking, the seams that will be in here for purely style reasons as opposed to fit reasons. So the princess seam itself will take care of all the fit, but then the additional lines that go horizontally across the garment will just be there for style reasons here in the front. And I did realize I wanted to add on a quarter inch along my side seam. I usually do this for outerwear, which this kind of counts. It's a little lightweight summer jacket in a cotton twill like a denim jacket in some ways, because cotton twill and denim are very similar fabrics. Mm -hmm. 
but usually I add a quarter inch of ease for outerwear, so I just added that along the side seam before I forgot even more. As I'm cutting this all out, I'll cut along my princess line here. This is a shoulder princess. Of course, I do have a video here on the channel all about princess seams and turning darts into princess seams. So I can put that in a card here if you'd like to watch that video. And I have made a little summer cotton jacket here on the channel before too, but that was several years ago and I look like a hot mess in that video. So I will not be linking you to that one. But I can cut away the dart excess for the waist, close up my other dart here, turning this into its proper princess. I'm just gonna round off the end of the bust here just a little bit because this is very, very, very pointy. And I do wear a pointier style bra, but I still like to round this off just a little bit. I actually went overboard this time, so you'll see me put a little bit of uh, point back on later. So, you know, it's fun. And here I am walking the seam to make sure this princess seam does still match up and that I didn't cut too much away and finding out that I did. So I'm just adding on a little bit, trying to make it at least a smooth curve here over the apex, like so. The other way to solve this issue is if you want to round off your side piece, you can add length to the front piece, which I think I talk about a little bit more in the princess seam video, or at least I hope so. But just walking this seam to make sure everything works. And I'm going to start labeling uh, a, B, and C here, because this is going to be split into those three colors. I'm going to have a light gray cotton twill, a charcoal gray cotton twill, and then a black cotton twill. These are all the organic cotton twill from over on moodfabrics.com, so I will link to that fabric below. Um, of course, not sponsored as usual, but I do really quite like that fabric. I have a lot of it in my wardrobe, including the skirt that I will pair with this jacket today. I already have a pencil skirt made out of the black colorway of this cotton twill, so I can wear that with this and create a little matching suit, which is nice but I'm cutting apart all my color blocking here and adding seam allowance. Now, technically I could line up these shoulder pieces and the waist pieces and eliminate the seams between them because the seams are just a straight line. Of course, the middle piece there has most of the fitting for the princess seam, so I can't do that there. And because I want to do decorative top stitching on this whole garment anyhow, I will go ahead and just leave this full princess seam in here and keep this pieced as opposed to layering up these shapes. But anytime you have a straight line in a pattern piece, if you want to layer that shut, you totally can. And for the lower part of my jacket front here, I'm going to go ahead and trace the top of my pencil skirt pattern here. This is, of course, my basic block skirt front pattern, which is also doubles as my uh, doubles as my pencil skirt pattern. I use it all the time, just on its own, to make pencil skirts. In fact, it's the pattern that I used to make the skirt that matches this suit. I will go ahead and add a quarter inch onto the side seam because I did so for the top of this pattern, and I need it to match up. So I'll add that quarter inch down here along the side seam of the like skirt-ish portion as well, and just flare that a little bit from below the hip. I will draw my seam allowance indication in here so that I can line up my front piece along the center front where I have my dagged edge drawn in. I like kept that entire dagged edge when I cut out the front so that I could go ahead and layer it on over this skirt portion and have that match up perfectly. Now, because I moved my dart over a half inch on the bodice, I need to move my dart over a half inch on the skirt as well because they originally line up, or at least they are supposed to. So I will move that dart towards the side seam, that same half inch that I had done so on the bodice as well so that this piece will still match up. And I can go ahead, because again, this is a straight line, and layer these pieces closed. So I have additional seams in this for design reasons, and here I'm closing a seam for a design reason. So my last center front piece at the waist, I'm going to layer that over the waist of the skirt piece and just extend it, basically using the skirt as a guide. And I will just make this jacket like nine inches down from the waist. I think I, 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 think I made it eight and a half, and then nine at the side, and then in the end I have to add that half inch into the front because of reasons. So, eh about nine inches from the waist to the end of this jacket. And I can go ahead and start cutting this out. I'm going to cut this out along the dart leg that I had moved the dart over. And uh, all I need to do now is add seam allowance for this to match up to the rest of this top piece here from the bodice pattern. Cut away this funky edge. There we go. I do have the zigzag edge kind of ending just below the waist. Um, and then it just straightens off. So it's just what I decided to do. You can make it zigzag all the way down if you want to. You can do whatever you want, honestly. Uh, well, the weird thing about pattern drafting is, truly, you can get quite creative. Uh, you can do anything you can dream of. But I'll just finish off this seam allowance here. And now I just have made piece C for my bodice longer for the jacket here, basically. That's all that's going on there. Now for this other bit of skirt here. This is going to still be sewn into the waist of my jacket pattern here. So I need to go ahead and cut this out and make sure everything matches up. Again, I like to walk my seams. Again, this dart, we can just go ahead and eliminate it because now it's along a style line and then I need to add seam allowance along that style line because it needs to have something there to be able to sew it back together. Anytime you cut the pattern apart, you need to add seam allowance if you want to sew it back together. As I say, practically every week here. And this along the seam if you wanted to, if you may, wanted to make the jacket cup out further than the body instead of fitting against the body, uh, they do this a lot at Dior. You can actually add a flare along this if you want to, to make it cup out away from the body. Um, so another design option there if you 
would like to take it. I'm just going to fold my dark clothes and make sure everything lines up at the waist with the piece above it and then make sure that everything lines up with the side piece and the front piece for the skirt portion of this jacket basically. Um, and walking the seam there was a slight discrepancy just because this front piece curves a tiny bit at the waist because of because of me moving that dart over. It's kind of in the weeds. Um, let's just say I needed to even out these pieces once I walked that seam and so I did so. I made the front that tiny bit longer and now both of them are about nine inches down from the waist. Eh. I eliminated the waist seam on the center front piece, basically is what's happening here, but I still have a waist seam here in the side front piece. We have a lot of pieces today. Okay, this is one of those ones where if you're following along, you're getting quite advanced at pattern drafting, good job. <laughs> and if you get lost, don't worry about it. Maybe when you come back in a year, it will make more sense. And maybe it's just that I'm not the best at explaining. It's probably not you, it's, it's probably me. But I've traced a copy of my bodice block back, drawn in my dart for that, and I need to do the same sort of modifications I did the front to this. So again, I'll add a quarter inch along the side seam. I actually ended up dropping the arm side, uh, the underarm area, about three eighths of an inch on the front uh, in a like, off camera somehow. So I'll do the same for the back here. And then again, bring my shoulder seam up and out that quarter inch. And then I'll take my side front pieces and go ahead and line those up along the side seam so I can have a starting point for where those color blocks ended on the front and where I want them to begin here on the back. And I decided to have these tip up towards the center back and have a center back seam here. So you can see I traced this with a half inch seam allowance along my center back. And because I put this angled line up into the center back through the tip of this dart, it does mean I will be able to close this dart into these pieces. So I will do that as well. But I want to continue the idea of a princess seam back here uh, somewhat in order to do a little bit of additional color blocking. No one is surprised. So I'm going to separate the top like half of this pattern piece into three pieces so that I can have the gradient colors of fabric kind of uh, offset and a little bit art deco back here. Hopefully in the end, when you see the jacket, you'll see what I mean. And I am labeling this. I like to put arrows on pieces so I know which way is up. I like to put indications on which pieces are side, which pieces are center back, things like that. So uh, I don't get lost later on. And I even started writing on here like charcoal, light gray, black. So I knew when I was cutting things out that I wouldn't get any more confused than I have to, honestly. but I can start cutting this back piece out as well. Again, I'm leaving that half inch seam allowance along the back because I intend to have a center back seam. I can cut along my back princess seam now. I cut apart the top three pieces, but these bottom pieces here, I will go ahead and layer the dark closed first and then cut out the horizontal stripe as it were. And this stripe will misalign a little bit once I do that. So I just need to redraw it before I go ahead and cut those apart. And then once again, I've cut everything into its color blocks. Now I need to add seam allowance. Let's just use magic to do that. There we go, half inch seam allowance added everywhere I need to, everywhere I cut my pattern apart, I have now added seam allowance. Again, if you are new here, <laughs> so sorry, um, maybe watch some of my simpler videos, but yes, my block patterns do have seam allowance already on them. So I only have to add it when I cut my pattern pieces apart, not everywhere. Hopefully that makes sense. Now for the back of the jacket from the waist down, again, I'm going to trace my back skirt piece and then the camera is going to cut out of me, but I just traced the side seam from the front to make sure that matched up the same amount of flare at that side seam. And I'm not going to layer the waist closed on any of this. I'm just going to keep the rest of this the same. Make sure I still have that half inch along the center back, just as I did on the back bodice as well. Now I'm going to trace the top like third of my sleeve pattern here. You can see me make this sleeve pattern that fits into my bodice block here on the channel. I can put a card up to that. If you want to see how I made this sleeve pattern, I'm going to trace the top of it. I'm going to go ahead and make this a bit of a puff sleeve, which I don't think either of my inspiration patterns from Butterick 1945 have a puff sleeve, but I want one, so I'm going to add it in. So there. Um, so I'm going to put those three lines in just radiating from my center about two inches out from the center of my sleeve along the sleeve cap so that I can go ahead and put that puff in. You'll see me do that in a minute. And then originally I was going to do this as a like grown on cuff sleeve where you just make the sleeve extra long so you can cuff it up. And then in the end, I decided to change my mind because I didn't want to have to have a seam because the sleeve is going to be, again, all three colors of fabric. So it's going to have light gray at the top, then a middle section of charcoal, and then the cuff of it will be black. And I decided I didn't want to have a layered, like folded cuff and have a seam between the charcoal and the black. It was just going to get so bulky so fast in a cotton twill, like a bottom white cotton twill. So I'm doing a cuff sleeve here, but I'm going to change my mind. Yes, yes, make the sleeve extra long, then you can fold in a cuff, like so. This is what I'm thinking I'm going to do today. Eh. Well, watch me change it later after I start cutting this project out. 
Anyhow, I'm going to cut along these lines here, and then I will cut along the lines I put radiating, radiating up into this leaf cap here. And I'm just going to shift this all up and out a little bit so that I can add some extra ease up into the sleeve cap to create some gathering at the top of the sleeve cap where it meets the shoulder seam, aka a puff. Create some puff, like so. So this gets taped back down and this just gets opened up like so. Adds in about two inches along my sleeve cap, probably. And obviously there's like a bicep fullness being added in the center there to allow for puffage. And then you do raise this up another half inch as well. I keep promising over the years, I've made many promises here on the channel that I will make a video exclusively about how to add puff to sleeves. And then I never do it because honestly, it doesn't sound very exciting to me. Uh, so I will get to it eventually, but sometimes doing the more like uh, practical lessons uh, is less exciting to me than creating new garments, of course. So I try and be a good teacher, but the designer in me wins out more often and I want to make fun new things as opposed to teach the basics. I know. Something tells me we'll be getting to a few more basics next year just because I won't have time to create a lot of you know new masterpieces because I will be moving across the country, hopefully, once I find a house. But once my initial changes are done to my sleeve, once again, I will start color blocking this, starting by adding in a center seam, like so. And then I'll separate this into an angled kind of design, just like I did for the back, basically. Coming from the underarm up towards the center of the sleeve, making sure that matches up with the other side. Could have drawn these lines in before I separated the center, but eh, you know. Who can say what I'm up to, really? And I will go ahead and add seam allowance along this new color blocking line that I have added like so and i'm thinking oh that's good for now so i'm organizing my pattern pieces by which color of fabric they need to be cut out on and here is my lightest gray cotton twill start lining up my pieces here making sure that they are on the correct grain line one of the nice things about using alphanumeric paper is if you have your pattern pieces lined up with the center front and center back along the grid you will always know what your like base grain line should be because the grid is showing the grain line unless you move things around too much Hopefully that makes some sense. But here I am cutting off the extra length from my sleeves so I can make a separate stripe down here that will just be a little stripe of black as opposed to a black cuff because it's just going to be too thick otherwise. Don't know what I was thinking, but clearly I came to my senses, which is nice. It's a good time to come to your senses before you cut things out. Correct. Like so. All right. Still organizing by color cut everything out of the charcoal and the black fabric that I need to. I will be fully lining this garment today, but I'm going to get started on the lining a little bit later. This jacket took me about two and a half days to make, to pattern and make, I suppose. And day one me didn't want to deal with lining. So that was going to be day two me's problem. I, I just put that off on her. A problem for future me. These fabrics have all been pre-washed, by the way washed and dried. Because they are 100% cotton, they are technically washable. However, the lining fabric I used, I did not pre-wash, so Eh. Now it's kind of uh, up for grabs whether or not this is a fully washable garment. But like, what am I going to do? Dry clean a summer jacket? Probably not. Hopefully wearing a t-shirt underneath this jacket will save the jacket, if you know what I mean. So it doesn't have to be washed too often. But here are my pieces all cut out. I can start laying things out so I know what to piece together. And I will start here in the back with the color blocked portion of the center top. Hopefully this makes any sense. We start running out of names for things. Like, I can say center back piece, but center back pieces A and B, you know. But these waist pieces actually can be sewn together as well, like so. And you can see here the center back seam could have been eliminated. I just wanted to have it there because I was going for this pieced look. So I wanted to sew these seams and then top stitch them. So, eh. You can simplify something like this anytime, again, that there are straight lines, you can probably close them up. And the center horizontal stripe between the like waist portions and the top portions of the back is the seam that I will sew last. And with my top center back pieces sewn, I can go ahead and sew them to the shoulder back pieces. I can start organizing my fronts here and then I will go ahead and actually grab the lower portion of the back so that I can transfer my darts that are on my original skirt pattern that I'm just using as they are here on this jacket pattern as well. I'm just drawing those darts, sketch those in with some colored pencil so that I can go ahead and pinch and pin those and sew them over on the machine. We all know I end up sewing a lot of darts because I like making fitted clothing. That's right. I do get questions about adding ease to things or like how much ease I add. Um, today you watched me add that quarter inch at the side seam, but that's all I really ever do. Uh, I don't make things with a lot of ease personally. It's not something I prefer for my own garments that I make or wear. 
Um, so I'm not an expert in it, but I'm sure there are people out there who are. So if you are interested in things that have a lot more ease um, than the styles that I make, unfortunately, I am not the best resource for that kind of thing, as you probably have noticed over the years. But I will start piecing together my fronts as well, starting with the top portions here. Pieces A, sewing the top, center, and side fronts together, the light gray pieces, basically. And I have sewn those darts in the back, so I have those over here on the ironing board, and I have pressed those into place, pressing the dart fullness towards the center back, as I prefer to do. And of course, I'm starting to sew my piecing together over here, and I have to make sure that I press everything nicely in between each round of sewing, in between each piece, so that everything will be nice and smooth and ready for me to top stitch when I get to that point. I will go ahead and continue to assemble my back pieces here. I am top stitching the darker colors, as you can see here on the right hand side of the screen, as I go along, but on the lighter portions of this, I wanted to go ahead and top stitch everything after most of it was assembled so that I could do sharp lines around the corners as opposed to having to sew through them. You'll see what I mean in a minute when you see the finished effect with the top stitching in place, but I have to finish assembling these pieces before I can do that. And the seam between the top half and the lower half of the back is slightly curved, so I will have to clip and press this open. It's kind of where the dart fullness ended up migrating to, uh, just in the process of color blocking this whole thing. And I do just have my regular Guterman all-purpose thread over here on the machine. I'm using black to stitch all of this today, including the top stitching, which is why I was taking my time to do extra fancy top stitching where the lighter colors of fabric were, just because it was going to be black thread on light gray and very visible. So where the black top stitching is on black fabric, I wasn't being that careful about the whole situation, but where it's over light gray, I really want to take my time and make sure it looks as perfect as I can get it. And again, the seam between the top and lower portions of the back is curved. So I went ahead and put some clips in there and I can press that flat over my tailor's ham. And with both the left and right hand sides of the back together, I can go ahead and stitch these down the center back, of course. Lining up my color blocking as best I can. Hopefully it's perfect if I've done my pattern drafting correctly and cutting and sewing up to this point well, hopefully everything will match up. And you can see what I mean about having the offset piece here in the dark charcoal. So the dark charcoal portion kind of kicks up a little bit at the center back here. Just a little bit of an art deco geometric kind of flair that I wanted to add. No surprise there. And I'll go ahead and do the top stitching I was talking about. So you can see what that looks like here. Just keeps the corners where everything is pieced together really clean to do it last. So that's what I chose. And then I can go ahead and sew my waist seam between the lower portion of the back jacket and the bodice portion of the back jacket. So we'll go ahead and match up the centers here and sew that together. Again, this is a subtle curve, so I'm going to clip that before I press it open. This jacket will be fully lined as well, so I'm not worried about any of this fraying in here, especially because it gets top stitched down as well. So it's kind of an extra layer of security in there. And now that my back is all assembled, I can start assembling the front. So starting with sewing the darts at the skirt portion of the front here, I just have two darts to sew up here. Again, starting at the large end of the dart, sewing off the end as per usual. Then I will use those nice notches that I left myself on these center pieces here to put the notches onto the charcoal pieces between the bust and the other side of the front. So one side of a princess seam is usually curvier than the other. So it's important to match up the notches to make sure that everything fits down over the bust properly. It should be like a perfect fit. So you really need those notches to help keep you in the right place. And I will put a couple of clips about a quarter inch into the straight side of this, just because this is a thicker fabric with not no stretch to it. I really need a little bit of assistance going over the curve of the bust, especially since this bust is so pointy and curvy as previously established. I am sorry about the delay in our video today. For those of you who are very regular watchers, you will know that my videos usually come out around 11 a.m. ish, perhaps. And this video is coming out much later today because I am just behind on all the things. And then I don't know where Mercury is. And I also don't really believe in astrology, but then I kind of do. Um, but my tech has been fighting me as well. So, you know, it's just one of those weeks here at the Closet Historian here in the studio um, where I seem to be a little bit slow and I don't have time to be slow, which no surprise there but hopefully you can forgive me for a slightly delayed video. This was a more complex project this week, and then I spent three days making a necklace that you'll be seeing next week, so it was a complex beading project, also ate up some of my time this week. But press my dart fullness towards the center front. Of course, I have to clip these seams fully over the bust now at this point, so I'll do that and then use my tailor's ham to press this seam open over the bust area, my little mini princess seam here. 
You can notice on the front of this, I am sewing the pieces together. I'm sewing the vertical seams of everything together, of each color together, before I sew the horizontal seams. Just the order of operations for the front of this particular jacket. Depending on the color blocking, the order of operations is different. But now that I have the top two portions together, I can sew the light gray to the charcoal gray here. Again, matching up the princess seam line in the center of this. And then making sure everything fits down where it's supposed to be. And before I can sew the horizontal seam between the black and the charcoal sections, I need to finish the black side pieces here. Um, because the front section C has no waist seam, but there is still a waist seam in these side fronts. So I need to go ahead and sew that waist seam before I can sew them to the center fronts of the same color. Hopefully you can see what I mean. So the center front piece C here with the dagged edges, that is a full piece. It doesn't have a waist seam in it. So I needed to sew the waist seam of these side pieces before these can fit together. If you're following along with the pattern drafting, you know what I mean. And there we go. So now these will fit in. This is a slightly curved seam again, just because the dart was eliminated along this style line. Again, this is the seam here where you could add a little bit of extra flair if you wanted the jacket to stick away from the body, again, like they do so often at Dior. Um, Dior, Mugler, a lot of people will make these flare out from the hips, and you can even put padding in there, which is what Dior often do in their tailored jackets. And I will stitch that over here on the machine. Again, 12 stitches per inch, as is per usual for me over here. I really only switch that up for top stitching or like really specific uses. So for top stitching, I'll usually use eight stitches per inch just because I think it looks a little bit more like proper top stitching. Uh, top stitching usually uses a different thread as well, but I'm just using my same thread for all of this today. And here I am top stitching the lighter gray portions of my fronts. So I'm using the narrow side of my presser foot as a guide here and going around and uh, instead of sewing through the corners, I'm turning at the corners, as you can see, turning that 90 degrees and stitching this so that my corners are kept nice and clean and geometric, which I think looks quite fun when there's a high contrast between the color of the thread and the color of the fabric. But it does mean I have to top stitch this after everything is assembled, so that's why I'm doing it at this step in the process. And the nice thing about top stitching too, especially in a thicker fabric like this, is that once I have pressed my seams open, they are pretty flat, but to keep them that way, it's nice to have them all top stitched down. All right, like so. And now that these black portions are sewn together, I can again, yes, clip and press those open and top stitch this. And then I can stitch the black lower portion of the jacket to the gray upper portion of the jacket. A true gradient going on today with our color blocking. Is it really color blocking if it's all shades of gray? I guess perhaps not. It is a bluish tone of gray, or like a purpley tone of gray, technically. I will have a couple of craftier projects coming up for you in this next month as I work behind the scenes on some rather large projects that you'll be seeing as we move into fall. And hopefully we will move into fall properly here weather-wise soon because it is still 92 degrees today and sunny once again. It's been rather a warm week here in Colorado. We had one crispy, like rainy day and I got real hopeful, but then it, it went away. Sewing my last horizontal seam here in the fronts on either side between the black and the charcoal here. Once again, this is a slightly curved seam, so it will need to be clipped. This is such a shallow curve that I thought I could get away with not doing it. So you see, I pressed it and I was like, ah, nah, I better clip it. So come back in here and clip it. When in doubt, always clip the seam, honestly. Especially if something's gonna be fully lined and encased anyhow. And if my voice sounds tired, I do apologize. I am uh, wearing myself a little bit thin and this is the second time I've recorded this voiceover because the first time I uh, failed to put the memory card into the recorder. Like I said, not sure what Mercury's up to, but apparently uh, there's like a placebo effect with the moon or something. <sighs> and even if things aren't scientifically correct, they are still messing with me, which is very rude. In incredibly inconsiderate of the space-time continuum or whatever. <clears throat> and here I am going to piece my sleeves together. Again, all that color blocking. Wherever I cut everything apart when it was paper, I now have to put it back together now that it is fabric. So I will go ahead and seam all my sleeve pieces together. And again, top stitch these in a similar way that I did the bodice. So I'll make sure that I have all my light colored pieces sewn together before I go ahead and do that kind of clean top stitching once again. I'm very excited about this jacket. It's been a long time coming. I've had this idea to do this for a while. I'm pretty sure I bought this fabric like around the holidays, like December of last year, if not before then, because I was planning on making this like last summer. 
I don't know. I've had this project in mind for a long time and this fabric sitting in here ready to go for a long time. But you know, I just pile uh, my schedule. So <laughs> I don't often get time to do, I d certainly don't get time to do everything I have ideas about. So currently struggling with that right now. I want to make a great many things in the next couple of weeks, but of course, um, you know, I had to factor in time for like sleeping ugh, or like making dinner. So boring. I actually did a couple of loads of laundry this week. What an idea, you know? I don't uh, leave myself a lot of time for humaning, as we know, because there's just so many like fun things I want to do and not enough time. But I will go ahead and seam my pieces together along the side seams and the shoulders at this point, and then of course put my gathering stitching into the top of my sleeve caps before I can set those into this finished outside of my garment. Then I have to start thinking about the lining. Ugh, I guess. I don't mind lining things, it's just slippery rayon is less fun to work with. This cotton is so nice to work with, and slippery rayon is a contrast. But stitching my side seams in the jacket, and then I will go ahead and put the gathering into the top of this. This is again where I switch my stitch length to the largest stitch length this machine does, which is sti six stitches per inch, which is again difficult to say, six stitches per inch. And again, I'm using the narrow side of my presser foot to put two parallel lines of stitching into the top like eight inches of my sleeve cap here for both sleeves, so I can set those in once everything is pressed over here. Press my shoulder seams, like so. I perhaps should have top stitched my shoulder and side seams as well to match what else I had going on, but I actually skipped it for that. Don't analyze my shoulder seams too closely, you know? And I'll go ahead and set my sleeves in here. Again, setting in puff sleeves is a little bit easier because uh, if there's any excess, it just goes into the puff. But I always match up my underarm seam of my sleeve and my side seam of my garment first, and then I match up the uh, center of the sleeve with my shoulder seam at the top, and then pin everything in between. So I can pin the entire smooth section down along the underarm, and then gather everything down to fit the sleeve cap up here at the top. Concentrating that gathering at the top, of course, either side of the shoulder seam. And once my sleeve is in, I will go ahead and fill my arm's eye with steam and press my tailor's hem into that so that the seam allowance all gets like, pressed into the sleeve for the most part and give that some nice steam here to make sure everything's nice and puffy and smooth and laying the way it's supposed to. And I will go ahead and put the other sleeve in here before I start working on the lining at last. And yes, I am using a slippery rayon twill lining, which is very nice and smooth against the skin, but a little bit more annoying to sew just because anything in a slippery rayon. It feels like sewing water a little bit. It's more difficult to lay out and cut like this, and it's more difficult to seam together just because the fabric has a mind of its own, as compared to nice cotton twill or cotton sateen, which is very stable and nice to work with, as we know. But I was being really good today and doing a full lining as opposed to just finishing this jacket with facings. Outerwear really deserves a lining, you know, even if it's just summery outerwear. And you may have caught that I had taped my pieces back together. So anywhere I didn't need to have a seam, obviously this lining isn't color blocked, I taped the pieces back together so that I would have less seaming to do for putting this lining together. Otherwise it is the same order of operations as the outside of the jacket. And here I am sewing my side seams and shoulder seams for that. I will set my sleeves, my lining sleeves, into here as well. And you'll notice right here, if you look on the right hand side of the screen, that the very front center front piece of my lining here is cut in the cotton twill as well. So most of the lining is done in this nice slippery rayon, but I cut the center fronts of the lining in the twill to match up with the outside. And speaking of the outside of this jacket, I will go ahead and interface the side that's going to get its buttonholes just because I want to offer this a little bit more stability. Cotton twill is a pretty stable fabric to begin with, but I just feel weird putting buttonholes into anything without some interfacing. So went ahead and stabilized that before I got to the buttonhole portion of the whole shebang. So I'm lining up the Lining on the outside of my fashion fabric here with my right sides together. Lining everything up along the points, along the neckline, all along the hem. I will leave a little bit of the back hem open where it splits over the center back. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But uh, otherwise I'm pinning this all together, right sides together, so I can bag line this garment. stitch that all together over the machine. Again, how I get around corners. Sew to the corner, leave the needle down, pick the presser foot up, turn the project as necessary, put the presser foot back down, and just keep sewing. Like so. 
That's how I get around my corners. And there are extra corners today, of course, because of this dagged front neckline. I, you know, thought I was going to be confident and not draw in this neckline, my stitching line. But then, uh, as you can see, I had second thoughts once I got to it. So here I am using a little bit of chalk, a colored pencil or two, and sketching in with a ruler exactly where I need to turn on the inverse of these corners, just because it made me a little bit nervous. You could definitely eyeball this, but obviously I lost faith in myself halfway through. And technically, when you were pattern drafting this jacket, if you wanted to have a right and a left-hand side pattern piece, I use the same for either side. But if you wanted the underside of the jacket where the buttons will go, um, technically you only have to have the dagged edge on the outside for it to show. So the fact that I have it on the outside and the inside is just, you know, kind of extra. I could have had it be smooth on the inside, but then I would have had to make a separate pattern piece. So again, the areas where I decide to be lazy. I would rather stitch both sides of this to have these pointed edges than make one more pattern piece. I don't know why. These are the quirks of each individual sewer, I suppose. And once I have that all bag lined, sewn down, I can go ahead and come over here to the ironing board, take all those pins back out, and then clip all of my curves and trim all of my corners. Of course, there are extra corners on this project, but there's no surprise there. I've just trim everything so that I can turn this right side out and have everything lay flat. You could also throw some understitching in here at this point if you wanted to um, for certain areas of this that where it's possible. Obviously around the dagged edge would be quite impossible, but uh, around the smoother edges of this along the hem along the top portion of the neckline, you could probably get some understitching in here after you have it clipped. But I knew I was going to top stitch the edges of this in the end, so I did not bother with any understitching on this one. I'll go around all the edges and press everything nice and smooth and flat at this point. And right here at the center back where I had left it open, I can either slip stitch this shut, but it will be caught in my top stitching when I do that. So I'm just going to have that be the way that that is closed. Uh, the only other portion of this that is open at this point is my sleeve hems. I do have them both turned up and pressed a half inch into it. So I just need to slip stitch the hems of my sleeves, like the outside fabric to the lining fabric. So I'll show you myself pinning that later because that's one of the last steps I do for this jacket. But before that, I have to put my buttonholes in, which is rather nerve wracking, especially when you're nearly done with the whole thing to put these in. You really hope that the machine doesn't eat anything or nothing goes wrong, um, which is why I'm doing a practice buttonhole on two layers of twill here. Always do a practice buttonhole like whenever possible, because you want to make sure your button fits through the size of buttonhole you're choosing. And that's actually how I ended up choosing my buttonholes for this jacket today. I actually put up a poll on Instagram because I couldn't decide which buttons to use on this. But in the end, only one button fit the size uh, like buttonhole template that I had in the machine for this day. Uh, so I only had one matching template and button. So that's the one I used basically. Um, I don't, this button holder I love. This is a vintage button holder. Mine's actually from the 1940s. So it's the same age as the designs we're taking inspiration from today. Uh, this button holder still works great. Although the machine's from 1955. So this button holder is about 10 years older than my machine. But this button holder works great. I love this thing. I do wear safety glasses when using this at the machine because um, every once in a while the needle will hit a part of the machine, like something goes a little haywire. If the plate covering the feed dogs isn't screwed down extremely tightly, sometimes the needle will hit that plate if it shifts and the needles will snap. So I do wear safety goggles when working with this little machine, but it is a star. It has great buttonholes. I go around three times for a really nice finished buttonhole. But the templates for this machine that like go into the back of it to tell this device which size of buttonhole you want, uh, you put a little template, a little cam in the back of it, and those cams only go up to a certain size of buttonhole. So that's the only annoying thing about this is that I can't do like a two inch buttonhole, which is a bummer because sometimes I want to use giant vintage buttons. And in order to do so, I would have to hand sew my buttonholes or plan from the start and do bound buttonholes instead, which I can, but not for a quote unquote simple summer jacket like this one. And if you would like to see how to do hand sewn buttonholes, I always follow Tasha's tutorial. So I will link to her blog post about them from ages ago that I've been referring to uh, for years and years, just because I only do hand sewn buttonholes every few years. And every time I do them, I have to look up how to do them again because it's been so long. But here I am again, pinning those sleeve hems together so that I can go ahead and slip stitch those closed. And you can see, I do have my top stitching around the rest of the edges here at this point. I threw that in there without getting a clip, unfortunately. But all I have left to do for this jacket is to slip stitch these sleeves and sew my buttons on and everything will be finished.
And here is my finished color blocked dagged front mini suit jacket thing. Summer suit jacket in this lovely cotton twill. Of course I already had the coordinating cotton twill pencil skirt in my closet because I do just like this organic cotton twill from Mood so I have several pieces in different colors of it and I paired that with a large black straw hat to keep the sun off of me because it is sadly still like 91 degrees here. We had a couple of crisper days early in the week and they really had me looking forward to fall and I did wear this entire ensemble to the grocery store on the way home including the giant hat so I hope everyone enjoyed the extra little bit of glamour that I was bringing to the produce section today. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this project came together today and thank you as always for watching. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon so I'll see you then. Bye!